Hello everyone and welcome to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. So just a disclaimer ahead, this is not the start of a series or anything. This is uh, pretty much a game review of the version 1.09.3, which is currently the live version. So future viewer, if uh, you're coming across and uh, you find that <laughs> this might be slightly outdated, that's why. So what I'll do is uh, I'll give you a big, bit of an overview of the game, what uh, this is about, what I've been testing so far, and uh, how I see a uh, how I see this becoming part of the channel going forward, and what kind of format this is going to be, and how this is all going to work out. So, Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. This was the game, one of the three games that I had uh, put out in a poll to say, hey, which one would you be interested to see on the channel? And this one won by a wide margin. So a lot of people are very interested. This game is in pre-release. It's in or in early access. So uh, this is very much work in progress. And this is sort of also what my expectations were when I went down and started testing. I, I figured that it would have rough edges. Uh, this game consists pretty much of two aspects. So there's the uh, there's the sandbox aspect where you get to design a ship, and there is the campaign aspect. Let's have a quick look at the sandbox sandbox aspect um, for now, and uh, let's just design ourselves a. Uh, we'll do we'll do an Austro-Hungarian battleship because I'm quite f familiar with those. So uh, let's go for. Let's go for. You can see that you can go from anywhere of 1890, which gives you early, early pre dreadnoughts, up to 1940, which gives you uh, World War II designs. So, if we start out at the relatively early times and get to design ourselves a ship, then uh, this will, will clear it out. This is probably a, an older design that I've done previously. Uh, we've got a battleship. There are, you, there are a couple of different hulls. There are cruisers, there are destroyers, there are torpedo boats, light cruisers, heavy cruisers, battle cruisers, battleships. No carriers. Uh, there are submarines in the game, but they are um, they are relatively... Uh, they, they seem to be just numbers at this point. So there's no actual visual. You can't do anything really with them. They just exist as a sort of a, a statistic. Uh, ships have, and this is a very, very small, because we are at the very early onset of the game, and I'm doing this for a reason, I'll tell you in a minute, but you have a relatively small selection of things that you can put on the ship. You can put, um, you can put a tower in the front from where you, can have your, uh, where you can have your observation and you can have your bridge. You get a tower into the rear. Uh, then you're going to need a couple of funnels. And you're gonna need a couple of guns. So uh, we could use like 254 twin barrel mount main guns. There we go. And we have a battleship. Easy, right? Now we can go into battle. Not quite so quickly. Because one of the things that this game really does, and really does well in my opinion, is uh, it it goes into quite a lot of details in terms of, of how these things all work. So if we're looking at if we're looking at the ship statistics here on the side, it's it's quite it's it's quite comprehensive. Um, we've got uh, we, we obviously have done we have all the necessary bits to make the ship work. Uh, we have a damage resistance. We've got uh, stability and and buoyancy. We've got the turning speeds. We've got pitch and roll, which are affecting all kinds of uh, factors. Uh, we have the we have communications and accuracy coming from the towers for, for gun direction. We've got maneuverability stats, um, acceleration uh, and main sustained speed in turns, all kinds of things. We've got surface detection and we've got the weapons themselves, which, as you can see, have penetrations, different penetration values, because armor angling very much is a, is a factor here. So armor piercing... Uh, works better at um, at more straight angles and doesn't work quite as well on uh, on very strongly angled uh, impacts. Uh, this one one of the things that kind of stood out to me here when I was testing, and I think this is also one of the sources of problems that are currently uh, that that uh, are currently in the game, is that uh, it it distinguishes between belt and deck uh, deck penetration. So the assumption here is, and you can see that the closer you are, the higher penetration you've got against the belt, 
and uh, the lower penetration you have the back against the deck. So there's a bit of an assumption in here built in. So the assumption is that your your deck hits are always going to be coming are, are going to be com uh, coming in at flatter angles the closer you are, which is not a terrible assumption to make. The problem is it assumes that the deck is flat. <laughs> so if a ship tilts, if if a ship starts um, if 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 a, if a ship starts taking on water, and uh, and uh, starts uh, developing a list, and you start start hitting the deck a lot more, then obviously this assumption is wrong because at that point you might be close by, but your angle against deck is actually not quite as this kind of simplistic assumption would would go would go with. So while it's very refreshing to see these kind of mechanics, it's also clear that this is still very much work in progress and that. Um, it's it's having it's having its issues during during certain scenarios. Uh, we've got armor, but we've not just got um, we've got an armor thickness, uh, and we've got armor quality as well. So this takes into account uh, historically different uh, different kinds of armors and and face hardened uh, and all kinds of different situations that would with the same armor thickness actually have a more effective armor down the road. And this is this is great stuff. This is really, really detailed into all kinds of depth. Uh, we have fires, floods and flash fires. So ammo detonations are definitely things that can happen. So how do you how do you how do you how do you influence all these kind of things? Well, uh, on the on the other side. So now that we've put some things on here and we're actually going to need a bunch of guns. So let's put some 76 millimeter casements in here. And I get them aligned properly. I don't like this one. That's one sticking out. It's okay. So we get these on. Okay. So we've got some secondary guns, 76 millimeter secondaries uh, in in casemates, and we've got the 254 millimeter main guns, four guns. All in all, we've got a 10,000 ton uh, displacement. We've got speed of of 18 knots, and um, we haven't really we've got left everything else pretty much on standard but now we're starting to look and we're saying okay um we're using iron plate armor we could be using compound armor which is better but if you keep a, keep an eye on the ship weight uh, this actually massively increases the weight of the ship because well this the ship has a relatively large main belt and, uh, and then we could start hey we might need some barbettes so our ammunition doesn't blow up when it gets hit and we might need a uh, an underwater protected deck to help uh, to help against things as well. And very quickly, you're starting to reach the limits of your weight. And this is where it becomes then interesting. So you then can start messing around with the armor. And I have this in millimeters here, but you can change this into inches. <laughs> and you can say, okay, so I've got better quality armor now. So these 240 millimeters are actually more effective armor that we've upped it, but we're using a lot more weight. So, uh, so you then start messing around with the weight. We've got a good engine efficiency, but we also have a forward offset, which means that the ship's heavier in the front than it is in the rear. So we can do things like uh, starting to move the turret around a little bit, uh, the turret, the, um, the funnels, and see if we can push them a bit to the back. And there, now we have a balanced ship. So a lot of things here that you can then modify. If you, if you want to have more range, because the range currently is dreadful, uh, you need to take more coal on board, which uh, then gets to ship overweight. So now you have to say, okay, where else am I going to take um, maybe the design speed? I'll drop it down to 17 knots. That reduces the weight. Why is that? Well, because the end, you don't need as much engine power to make this happen. Uh, you've got a cost as well. So you have to spend money for ships. Doesn't isn't so important in, in sandbox mode, but... Um, uh, in uh, So we could drop this down to 16 knots. And we're still... We're still uh, we're still underway, so let's get it back to 17. Uh, we we could reduce the armor plating and could say we don't need 240 belt. We could do a 220 millimeter belt, maybe doesn't actually even allow us. 230 is sort of the minimum. We could remove uh, the uh, the first deck of um, of casemate guns. That's one one thing we could do. Uh, we could try to maybe reduce the conning tower a little bit down to 200 millimeters and we're getting there uh, maybe we don't need 367 millimeters on 
uh, on the forward on the forward plates of the of the guns. So let's put it down to 300. And there we go. And we're already uh, we're, we're kind of relatively close to our 10,000 ton displacement. So you'll be you'll be um, you'll be messing around with these values quite a bit, trying to fit things in. And, and this is what I really enjoy because it's the it is the dilemma that historic historically ship designers were facing. You had um, you could have something that's fast, <laughs> you could have something that's well armored, you could have something that's, that's got great firepower, or you could have something that's uh, cost effective. But how far do you slide on each of these factors? How extreme do you make this? So you can then, in this kind of sandbox, um, launch this against a ship that uh, that the that the computer has that the computer has figured out. Uh, by the way, it goes down to different propellants and different bursting charges. So the de the level of detail here is is really is really relatively amazing. So you can then launch the ship and uh, get yourself into into a battle and test it against something that uh, something that the uh, the computer has designed. So in this case, it's a tumble home, some form of tumble home. Uh, pre dreadnought battleships probably got all kinds of uh, all kinds of things uh, this this battle view works pretty well uh, you've got some time compression and uh, you then oops there it actually is it's over there so let's turn around and target the enemy ship so we can have a look at the uh, look at the enemy ship there it is and uh, we're seeing so if we're, if we're looking at what, what's, what's going on here, we're actually getting over penetrations, we're getting um, semi penetrations, we're identifying the ship we don't know right right now, but we have uh, scored a hit with the 254s on the aft belt, an over penetration went straight through, but it has caused some flooding, as you can see the ship is flooding. Uh, when, once it's fully identified, uh, we will actually, and you see even the, the water is lashing over the, over the deck here, um, we, we will actually see uh, see more details on on the damage model on on the enemy ship, and you can then not just manage one ship, but um, but a whole a whole group of them. And uh, it is all in all relatively pretty, I would say. So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of nice uh, a lot of nice visuals here. You can you can manage the whole fleet, and you you, you then obviously have things like destroyers and. Uh, and, and cruisers, smoke screens, all kinds of things that you can manage. Now, this is uh, this is also where some of the problems are coming in. So, just as, as an example for one of the things that I that I realized, uh, if you look at your ship, uh, you you can tell it to you can tell it to avoid uh, other ships. This is general. This is on paper a nice idea. Because it tells it, it tells you yeah, okay so your ships don't crash into each other by the way uh, co uh, collision damage happens against enemy ships not against friendlies so uh, that's a nice idea but in practice if you have larger fleet engagements what this means is that oftentimes uh, on the on the computer side and I'm 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 reluctant to call it AI because it's not what it is but um, on the on the on the computer player side. What you uh, what you what you often see happen is that all the ships are stopping because none of them can figure out a path where it wouldn't collide with another one. So you have a fleet of 15, 16 ships all sitting stationary, and you can sail you know rings around them and shoot them up. And uh, they they don't they don't maneuver for effect things like that. But um, these are. I wouldn't say game-breaking issues. I know that there are some bugs, uh, some bugs here um, that I've heard of that I haven't really seen myself yet. But uh, this is all. It works. Th this mode works pretty well, and I think this was what this was sort of the earlier development of the game. This is how things started. So uh, let's speed things up a little bit uh, just to to get to the point of um, of actually identifying the enemy ship, so we can get a couple more ideas here. Uh, we do have a trained crew, which makes a huge difference. So untrained crews can't hit the broadside of a barn, because this is gunnery is difficult. This is uh, this is all pre-dreadnought times. This is all visual people with binoculars figuring out stuff. So let's get get a little bit closer, so we can actually get the uh, that we can actually get the the secondary guns on target. And there, uh, it's the Smolensk. <laughs> And the Smolensk got, we, we can see all the stats that um, the Smolensk has and uh, what the what the computer has designed here. 
And then once once the ship starts taking damage, we can see uh, we we can see how we see here now that the the stern section around around the um, the shaft has been flooded. Oh, that was a big hit on on us, right? So there you see that the 322 millimeters has done a full penetration on the aft belt, and that has caused some serious damage. And as we can see, the whole aft section of the ship's flooded. Uh, we've damaged the rudder. So that hit has pretty much almost disabled us here. And uh, this is a good hint that we probably need a bit more uh, more armor on the aft section because we now have the engine down. We have the uh, uh, we, we've got rudder, rudder disabled. One of three engines is damaged. We're flooding. Uh, the flooding is spreading. So our bulkheads aren't holding and uh, things are not going well. And as you can see, the ship's starting to list quite severely. So, so this sort of damage model and everything is, is really, um, is really, really interesting to watch. And uh, while it's not a complete physical, accurate, uh, we probably want to drop speed a little bit here so they can try and pump out the water. It's not a complete physic, completely physically accurate uh, simulations. So, oh yeah, the the the, the floods are spreading. The bulkheads aren't holding. Uh, so we may have to design a ship a little bit differently to be able to withstand the larger main guns, the 322 millimeters that they have on on, on that side. So uh, there's a lot of a lot of in interesting, fun stuff that you can do, and um, it's, it can be quite rewarding. Now the computer doesn't always come up with sane designs. Oh, yeah, they, sh they shot our funnel off, and uh, I don't think yeah we we don't have now due to the list. Our guns don't can't elevate high enough, and uh, can't actually fire. So we are pretty much dead in the water. There's not an awful lot that we can do, and I would say that's probably a victory for uh, that's probably a victory for the for the Smolensk. Uh, let's just speed up the process and observe our ship, see if we can uh, see if she can still survive a little bit. But yeah, with the level of flooding here, I don't think she's going to be. Uh, she's going to be there. she's going to be around for an awful, for an awful lot longer. So this is uh, this is a really fun aspect, but this is still also a very sandboxy sort of. As one battle, you can you can get multiple ships in. You can see what happens. You can modify your design and you can play it all over again. So this is one aspect of the of the game. Oh, and it looks like our crews are getting the flood under control. So we're we're back in the we're back in the battle. That was a close that was a close shave. Now the secondaries are opening up. Uh, and uh, we've got one of our funnels destroyed, so we make that a bit more cinematic. There we go. <laughs> we see that uh, we see that engagement, and uh, uh, yeah. So this is only just one aspect of the game, right? So uh, yes, you can just design ships, test them against other ship designs, and see kind of you know how things are working out. But uh, there's also a campaign mode, and uh, this I think is th is a later addition. And uh, this is one of the parts that looks a lot more unrefined. So um, we'll, just, we'll just watch the results of this battle. I just want to see, I just want to see what's still happening. How is the Smolensk? Uh, woo! No, main tower damage. Uh, Smolensk is looking, I think, a, a little bit better than us. So maybe we shouldn't be fully broadsiding here. Uh, the, the secondaries are firing still. But uh, they're actually firing armor piercing with the 76 mils. So we'll switch that over to high explosive maybe. See if we can uh, we can hit score some good get some fires going on, on the Smolensk. <laughs> as one does. And uh, we, okay, we've lost our we've lost our I believe we've lost our conning tower. Ooh, that was a big hit there right now. What was that? That was the 320s again. Yeah, four deck penetration, half deck penetration. So and we're sinking due to having flooding, yes. So they have gotten through the deck and uh, we are sinking. So definitely not enough armor on this ship. Uh, we'll have to do a little bit of a little bit of work here. So, uh, so if we go back, uh, the other mode that I talked about is the campaign mode. And uh, I'm just going to load up a campaign that I've been where I've been testing a little bit just uh, because create, starting a campaign takes forever. And this campaign mode kind of looks interesting at first glance. So you, you've got a really nice, uh, really nice old style world map. 
Um, unfortunately, it doesn't wrap around. So if you want to go play anything in the Pacific, you constantly have to switch between the two two ends. But uh, you've you've got um, you've got a bunch of uh, the British Empire, the German Empire, the Russians, the French, the Italians, Spanish, the United States, Japanese, the Chinese, and the Austro-Hungarians. Uh, this is very much not historical. First of all, everybody's called a democracy, which is not quite true. Um, and uh, I think even if you start on a later date, you still have the German Empire around in 1940 and the Austro-Hungarians and uh, the Russian Empire instead of the Soviet Union. So all these things is very much on an old history timeline. And you can kind of position your ships on these maps, but um, it is relatively, but the missions will, will come up per turn. It is relatively, it appears to be relatively random. I have managed to intercept things occasionally, but given you know, the limited amount of detection that these early ships have, that is not surprising. You've got, I guess, uh, you've got some politics to manage. Uh, you, you don't actually get the like grand strategy sort of aspect here. You don't get to manage armies or anything because this is, you're, you're, you're running the admiral side of things. Uh, you do have events where you can have kind of influence on politics because you are an influential kind of character as admirals historically were. But uh, uh, most of the politics is sort of managed by um, is managed automatically, and you you get you get the wars, and when the wars happen, then uh, you try to to deal with enemy shipping, uh, and try to defeat, uh, try to get victory points, and try to uh, try to to push the enemy towards uh, towards defeat by destroying the navy. You you can you've got some uh, financial management. And there is actually a tech tree here. So there's some research this is very early on, so there's not an awful lot, but uh, uh, there de there's definitely a, a detailed amount of, you get turret upgrades, uh, a, a, de a, de a detailed amount of things that are coming in here. And then you obviously get to design your ships, as I've done here. Uh, I've got battleships, I've got heavy cruisers, I've got some torpedo boats, and you get to manage your fleet. You tell them what to do, uh, you get to train the crew and all these kind of things. But uh, for one thing, for example, as you can see, like these these uh, pop-ups coming everywhere, right? This is really annoying. It's often in your way. Uh, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not so good. The UI can really be a little bit, um, can really be a little bit, uh, it's, it's a bit unfinished. So at, at places, and uh, let me see if I can find one. Uh, this one's actually there. Uh, this one's at sea. So can I? Can I actually? Where does it? Uh, here it is. Uh, if I, yeah. You you see you see this like there there's like um, uh, uh, tooltips are missing and um, and things like that. I think this box here tends to be a little bit weird. So maybe this is from an earlier release or something. You kind of have submarines, but you can't actually do an awful lot with them. Uh, there is some mine laying but and mine sweeping, but it's it's relatively passive as well. So, um, and uh, yeah, you, you, your ships, you can position your ships, but where they engage seems to be more around sea control and regions and, and also more, more at random. So uh, it's fun, I would say it's fun. And I can see a good idea uh, around this, where they are uh, expanding here. So they're definitely expanding on this campaign area into a, into something that I could see as, um, as something that I could do for uh, for a series, right? So I could say, hey, we could play as uh, I don't know Austria-Hungary in in the in the in this timeline, or as the United States in this timeline, and try to establish them as a. Um, as a naval power or play it during the Second World War. So it's just like if you pl pl start Second World War right now, you don't get the, you don't get the German Reich, you get the, I mean, you get the old, <laughs> the German Empire, which is a bit weird, really. So uh, definitely old history. But I could see that happening. Uh, like I said, a lot of, a lot of small issues, a lot of uh, lack of polishing, uh, like, the whole one turn per month thing can lead to quite long times. You, you occasionally get battles where the enemy just decides to retreat, and then you sit there for ten minutes looking at the screen, waiting for them to, waiting for you to be allowed to to exit the battle. It's stuff like that that shows that they are on track to build something really, really interesting. Because the whole concept of saying, I can design my own ships, 
and I can design my own fleet. And then I can research, I can refit. So these ships, for example, are refit with more, with more, um, more modern technology. Uh, and then I can refit these ships. Uh, there's a lot of balancing missing. So I, I find that um, my, if I, uh, my, my financial situation is, uh, as you can see, I've got like 2 billion naval funds and uh, a ship here, a battleship costs 9 million. So uh, it's like I could build hundreds of these things. And um, it, like it, it's, it's still, it, it's, it's unbalanced. It needs fine tuning. And it, it, it's occasionally just way too easy to uh, to just st steamroll uh, steamroll the enemy players. Um, I've had engaging battles, but I've also had battles where we just absolutely massacred everything. And um, mostly due to things like what I mentioned earlier, I've had a battle against the Americans in in this particular campaign, where um, where we've sunk like thirty ships uh, with 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 my four battleships and four heavy cruisers, and we lost one heavy cruiser. Uh, and that was mostly due to a the ship designs being a bit wonky and b them all stopping because the collision avoidance algorithm couldn't figure out the pathfinding, and uh, I was literally just sailing circles around them for an hour and just doing a great turkey shoot, which on the, is kind of fun once, but uh, if you see it happening during a campaign, it kind of takes the challenge out of it a little bit. So, I think there's a lot of there, there's a lot of work that needs to happen. Uh, still to to make that more engaging and it's, it's work in progress like i said it's a it's an early access game so i think the concept for me the campaign concept of i design my ship and i'm going to go up against enemy ships um, that uh, that other nations are designing on an old history path and just playing this kind of from a naval perspective is really really fascinating and i think with some editing this will require some editing so i'm not planning to do full episodes of just plain up uh, because sometimes you just sit there and click next for ten <laughs> for for twenty minutes, right? And nothing really happens, and it's not all that interesting. So uh, I, I think there there's, a, there's there's some potential for some really interesting storytelling and for some really interesting campaigns, but it needs uh, back fixing and it needs some balancing uh, as well as it is uh, for in order to you know come up with these kind of things. But uh, I still think it's it's already entirely playable. Now, this is version. Uh, this is, if I go back to the main menu, this is version uh, 109.3, which is the current live version. But one, version 110 is in work is is under works with a lot of kind of expansions around the campaign mode. And uh, I've, from what I've read, uh, the versions actually invalidate saves. So most likely, if I started at something now, once 110 comes out then the um, the saves be invalidated and you i think you uh, i think i read that you can't pin them on steam as well so uh, it's just all part of the of the early access kind of thing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to wait for uh for 1.10 and uh i am going to uh once that's out then i will probably start a first series and um, i've got some ideas of uh, what i'll be doing Interesting side effect that this all got me looking into pre-Dreadnought history, which is extremely fascinating and an area that I haven't really explored an awful lot by myself. But uh, uh, yeah, definitely something that'll come and I'll try to uh, to use the power of editing to gloss over some of the rough edges that it has as a pre-release and see if we can t tell some in interesting stories with a bit of history slash old history slant onto it. And uh, that's probably what, depending on when 1.10 comes out, uh, which I think is going to be early next year. So uh, expect something. Exp well, I have to practice a little bit with 1.10, but expect something to come around uh, reasonably soon after after that update. So maybe January, February, that about time next year, and uh, we will start seeing something on the channel. Anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks everybody, and uh, have a good one. Have a good new year, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.